Well, hello there. I was just with you guys 10 minutes ago, and now here we are again. And you're thinking, what are you talking about? We haven't seen you for uh, a whole weekend. Yeah, crazy how time is working, isn't it? Um, you can see we have our test coming up on Friday, the 10th. Uh, today is Tuesday, the 8th. Happy birthday to me a couple days ago. Um, we, uh, yes, I am still in my, in my 40s. Um, we need to go over the two assignments, chapter four, homework two, chapter four, homework number three. And then today in class, I'm going to go over number four and also the review and then in this lesson. And then I'm also going to go over it in the Zoom. So uh, it's going to be a little bit repetitious, but uh, whatever it takes, right? Uh, you have a lab tomorrow. Right now it says it's a lab quiz, but it's not really a quiz because that's how it was. That's how it is when we're in class. Um, it's, just, it's still going to be a take home lab. Um, just like normal. And I would say it's worth your time to do the lab Wednesday. It's easy. And um, it's just helping you practice with the range problems for your test anyway. So um, I think that's about all I need to say about that. So we'll get started on the homework assignments. Chapter four homework or chapter five. That's an old numbering. That's because my old textbook, this is chapter five. Um, you're Chapter four, make sure I have that right in there. Yes, chapter four, homework number two. So please forgive me on that. A rock is thrown horizontally at a speed of 10 meters per second from a 25 meter tall cliff next to, looks like the river or the ocean or something like that. How far from the base of the cliff will it hit? So remember that what we have here are two motions that are independent of each other. That if somebody were to drop a, drop a rock at exactly the same time that this rock was thrown horizontally, they will hit the ground, they'll hit the water at exactly the same time. So rather than following the parabola, let's follow the straight down like a free fall problem. That VI is horizontal, it does not get to go into this equation. VIT plus one half AT squared. Don't make that mistake on your test, okay? So make that look a little bit better. The VIT term is only for when we now go to S in the X direction equals V in the X direction times T. Hey, Mr. Purser, why isn't it called VI? Because even though it is a VI, it's a constant in the horizontal direction the whole time. So the initial X velocity is the final X velocity, right? It's the middle X velocity. So we just call it X. Over here, this goes away and we have a 25 meter tall something equals one half of 10 or 9.8. If you're using a calculator, might as well use 9.8. Once you get T, then we'll plug that in over here, 10 times the T, and my calculator said 2.26 seconds and 22.6. And on your test, you have one of these uh, broken up into the two parts. So um, obviously we wanna be able to do it. Your second assignment, chapter four, homework number three, questions six through eight. Uh, we're dealing with the range problems. And so, as you know, what we, whenever we see an angle, we're just going to break up that angle and it's the vector that's at the angle into its X and Y components. So that's the very first thing that I do here is I just find out the VIX and the VIY of this vector, okay? Of the, of the original initial velocity vector. Um, now, what we're going to do with that, okay? So the VIX term, we know that if this goes up and comes back down, where it hits the ground over here is no different than if there was no friction, an object that is moving for the same amount of time that our projectile is in the air is going to get to that same spot if it's going a little bit slower speed, VIX rather than uh, 100, okay? So I want to use as my money question, S in the X direction equals V in the X direction times T. V in the X direction was 87. So all I need to know is what is the time? Okay, so now how do I figure out the time? Well, now we're gonna look at the vertical direction instead. In the vertical direction, at the speed of 50, we can figure out how much time it takes to get to the top of its path, and then double that to get the time to get back down. We have a question like that on our test, independent of the um, projectiles at an angle, so we need to be able to do this anyway. So at the top, at speed of zero, it was launched vertically at 50, and gravity is what's slowing it down. I'll still use 9.8 just because, I don't know, I want exactness, but if you use 10 and tell me that the T is five, I mean, you're not gonna lose any points to that as opposed to 5.1, 5.2. 5 
but you will lose points if you don't double that. So we double that time by, let's see, I did use five. Five becomes 10. Once I know that the time is 10, then I plug it back into the money question. Oh, actually for this one, I take that back. Um, we wanted to know for part six, for number six, what time it was in the air. So that is the 10 seconds. Then the question seven is how far does it travel? That's that second money question, okay? Question number eight ties both of those together and just asks how far it travels. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna start by finding the X and Y components. Can you see that for this test, you know, as I just told you a week and a half ago when I was mad because my regular physics students, it's just a couple students, you know, there's over 20, 25 kids in there and there's only two that cheated. So why do I even care that much? Well, no, because I care that much. So with you guys being like 40 students, um, I've got like eight versions. There might be 10 by the time I'm actually putting this out because right now I, I don't have that many, but this is so easy to change everything, right? So don't follow somebody else's, follow your own work, right? You have all this stuff in, in your notebook, you've done it, um, you're gonna get it right. All right, so break that up into its X and Y components, whatever angle you get. Once you get the X and Y components, then we know that the money question is how far it goes is going to use the 19 and then it's going to times it by the total time. So I need to know the total time. I don't have a way to find the total time, but I have a way to find the time at the top and then I have a way to find the total time. I'll just double that. So now we're going to plug in the 16, not the 19. The biggest mistakes I see on this when we do this in class is people mixing these two numbers up, which one they use where. Don't do that. There's no uh, excuse for that. You should know by what you label it, what is the X and what is the Y component and what is the directions that you're talking about at any particular time. If you mix them up, that tells me you really don't know what it is you're talking about. You're just a robot going through this and you glitched and got things backwards. Don't be a robot. You can recognize which is the X, which is the Y component and which equation it's involved in. Okay. So Time to the top, 1.6, which means total time, 3.2. Then plug that into that money question that I had written on the last slide. We get 61. Okay. Question number 9, 9 through 12, now takes us into our next assignment. So you haven't had to do this yet. I probably suggested it maybe in a, in a Zoom announcement or something like that. So some of you probably took advantage of that. So this is going to be faster for you. For those of you who didn't, then my suggestion is you're going to use the pause button. You're going to pause this and you're going to solve it and then you're going to come back and see what it is that i did because i'm just going to talk about this quickly the same way i just did question number eight okay so right now you work on question number nine pause it when you're done come back all right we're back together so find the x and y components of your vi came out to be 50 and zero what that's because it's fired straight up so this really is a different question on your chapter test isn't it because we have an up and down problem. This is just an up and down problem. This is really all that's going on. In other words, if this was an AP test question, they would say somewhere in here that the picture is not to scale, right? So the fact that we see this angle here, I mean, I give you the same picture every single time. Picture's not to scale, whether it's a 30 degree angle, 45 degree angle, 60 degree angle, 70 degree angle, or even a 90 degree angle. Picture's not to scale. Objects going straight up at the speed of 50, and then that tells us that the total time is 10.2 and that the distance away from where it was launched, it lands at the same spot in the X direction because the V in the X direction is zero, okay? Good practice for our review, but I have a point to this with questions 9, 10, 11, and 12. So hopefully you're doing them all. So here's question number 10. Why don't you take a moment, try number 10. All right, you're back with us again. Uh, 50 meters per second, but now at a 30 degree angle. So I'm going to start by breaking up the VI into its X and Y components. Then I know that the money, oh, sorry, I already have the whole answer here. I know that the money question involves the X component, but what I need to know is total time in the air. So then I use the Y component over here. I know I didn't write anything down. Zero equals 25 plus negative 9.8 times T. That gives us 2.6, double becomes 5.1. And we solve, we get 220. Good times. Question number 11. 
pause. All right, we're back together. Now we're doing a 60 degree angle. So when you plug in a 60 degree angle, one of the things you notice is that your X and Y components are backward of each other. So that means the answer is exactly the same, isn't it? Well, not exactly. We notice that the distance came out to be the same because even though our speed in the X direction was less, remember last time the X direction speed was 43, now it's only 25. So how could something possibly go as far if it's got less speed in that direction? Because now what happens is because of the fact that it's got a larger velocity in the vertical direction, it's in the air longer. So therefore it has enough time to end up getting to the same location. And so a total time of 4.4, as opposed to a total time of 2.6, oh, 5 point, actually I said that wrong. A total time of 5.1 for this one, a total time of 8.8 .8 for this one makes up for it and we end up with the same position. We'll talk more about that in a second. Just that you can be able to solve it. You won't have to talk. Well, I don't know. As of right now, the test that is written doesn't require you to discuss this. But if I'm becoming disgruntled about uh, tests, I may make the test be a lot more prompt based where you have to tell me things about why things are the way they are. I want to hear what you have to say. Question number 12. Now let's try the same 50 meters per second, but this time at a 45 degree angle. So let's pause while you uh, have a moment to try this one. All right, we're back together. So you find the X and Y components. They happen to be the same thing for 45 degrees. Most of you are starting to recognize that. Then the money question is based on uh, us needing to know also the total time. So we use the other 35 to find out how much time it's in the air. 7.2, we plug in the 7.2 and we get 252 meters. And now what we can do is we can put all this together and look at the differences there. For those of you that are in calculus, uh, one of the things that you're going to learn to do is how to find a, um, a maximum. Uh, let's see if I can say this correctly. <laughs> I haven't taught calculus for a few years, so I'm trying to think of how the example questions work that explain all this. Um, it's in chapter... Hmm, it's something. You can be learning it. When you do, you can look back and you can put in the chat, hey, Mr. Purser, you were talking about this with finding the maximum. Um, I, for the life of me, can't put it together right now as to what, what the section was. But uh, what's nice is this is one of those things that shows that, how we can um, do a maximization of something. Okay. So uh, I feel like it's in the derivative chapter and the applications, but, you know, maybe not. Maybe it was in the. Maybe it was in the integral chapter, one of those. Anyway, you see this. So as I even put up here on the AP test, if you had something like this, they're not going to have you work out all of this work. Just too much time. What they're going to do is they're just going to ask you to explain conceptually which one goes the farthest, but then you have to tell them why. You have to justify your answer. So what you would say about the 45 degree angle is you would say that it, the 45 degree angle gives a pretty good size uh, X component of the velocity. But then also because of the pretty good size Y component of the velocity, it gave us a pretty good size total time in the air. When you combine these two things that are both uh, combined together to maximize this, you end up with the distance being the greatest. I don't believe that's going to be something that would be on this test. It just doesn't seem right. But um, I can see the AP test somehow wording it, so just be aware. All right, that takes care of that homework assignment. Now we want to do the same thing with the chapter two through four review. We have seven questions here. Um, you're going to pause and you're going to solve each of these problems and think about how it is that you solve each of these problems. Ignoring air friction, how fast will an object be moving and how far will it have fallen after dropping from rest for one, two, five, ten seconds? Okay, so I'll even help you out before you pause unless you already did it. I'm thinking I want to use this question for how fast, and then I want to use this equation for how far. And so what we see here is that maybe initially the parabolic nature, the quadratic function that's here, takes a little bit of time to get going, whereas the linear nature of this equation gets going right away. So after one second, 10, after two seconds, 20, after five seconds, 50, after 10 seconds, 100 meters per second, and neglecting air resistance, okay? But for displacement, 
we when we plug into this equation, remember that the VIT term is zero. So then we have that after one second, I know somewhere in here you pause, you get five. After two seconds, you get 20. So see how this starts out kind of lagging behind, but then the parabolic nature of the graph for this, you graphed it, you had to do it for the free fall lab. Um, it starts taking off after five seconds. Uh, uh, oh, let's see here. 125, five times 25, I think 125. You know what, how about we just go to our answers? Yeah, okay, so I so 125 is what I was gonna say based on 10, good. It just felt too big, but it's not. The parabolic nature, it gets really big. And then you can see by 10 seconds, our distance is ginormous. So um, be able to solve those equations, free fall stuff. Um, adding vectors, this did not make it onto your test. So this might be one of those places where you kind of fast forward or something, but you want to take the time to go over it. Vector components and adding vector components is just a wonderful skill to have in a class like this. Here's some things I'm going to say about this one that are more important than the problem itself. I'm going to say that the these are what? Velocities. The Vy in this one is positive. The Vx in this one is positive because it's in quadrant one. I'm going to say about the pink vector that the Vy component of this is negative and that the Vx component of this is also negative because it's in quadrant three. So what I know about this is that actually these are two vectors that are gonna be taking away from each other. But when you go to add them together, conceptually, I can say that take this vector like so and then add this vector like so, puts me somewhere over here in quadrant two. So if I were to make an estimate I would say that the length of the vector is around five. So here's my resulting vector. I'm gonna go less than five, I'm gonna go four. So four meters per second as a length, and then as an angle off of the positive x-axis, I would say that's about uh, 160 degrees. Now that was a very quick sketch. If I would have used the actual ruler and drew this out you know, nice and clean and neat, I bet you I could get this even a little bit closer. So plug all this stuff in. Okay, so the angle that I got, which is 20.4 degrees, is really this angle right here. So if this is 20, that makes this 160. Look at that. I don't know. It is also that this could be lingering in my brain too. 3.69, that's pretty close to four. So, you know, as an estimate, we can, we can kind of estimate where a vector is. That would be a fun test question. While I'm making these notes here, I'm just kind of thinking, man, should I just adjust this a little bit? I know what I'll do. I'll put a question like this on the makeup test. So if something happens, if there's a test discrepancy, I don't like something that I see and it might be fishy, I don't, I'm not gonna go through the hassle of calling you out with your parents or Mrs. Stewart or whatever else. We'll take care of you by giving you a makeup test where we give you something like this instead. Doesn't that seem like a better idea? Firecracker shot straight up. You have this on your test along with you have to draw the vectors. So like if the firecracker was here, then the firecracker is here, then the firecracker is here, then the firecracker is here, and then it gets to its maximum point right there. Like it says top. And then over here it says, I'm not sure why I'm saying bottom. It should say down, shouldn't it? That's a D. Down. Then that you show me what happens with the vectors going down. So be prepared to draw velocity and acceleration vectors on both parts of this. This is the same ball. So it's not like it went up here and then moved over and came down here. It's going up and coming down, but we don't want the ball to be in its way for the down picture. So therefore we put them on two separate, like it's almost like a, you're seeing um, cartoon slides. And so you're taking care of one and you're taking care of the other, okay? Anyway, plug all this in. You should be pausing, solving. and you get these equations. I put on your slides there, one of the biggest mistakes I see by media, mediocre physics students is bastardizing the motion equations. Don't do it. Don't make mistakes of the motion equations. I won't give you any partial credit if you make mistakes of the motion equation, okay? You have an equation sheet. You guys are the smartest students on campus. There's no excuse, right? If you're making mistakes like this, what are we gonna say about general society? Somebody in the society has to do things perfectly and that's what you are gifted with. It's a blessing and a curse. Don't make a mistake on this, okay? 
Uh, marble thrown out a window at three meters per second lands in a flower pot on a fire escape three seconds later. Uh, how far beneath was the flower pot? So, you know, really honestly, the telling us that it uh, landed way out there on a um, fire escape doesn't even matter because really all we care about is if you were to just drop the marble, it hit the ground at the same time, right? And that's all they asked us was how far beneath is the flower pot? Um, I mean, I guess if you read more into this, which you don't need to on your test, is could they be implying that we actually have to solve for this distance here in order to solve this? Could you do that? Pausing, because I'm going to let you think about could you do that? Because that would make a good question. Here's what I would do. I would start by finding out what this vertical distance is, because that's what we're doing anyway. I would solve that in the S in the Y direction by taking VIYT plus one half AT squared, then crossing that out. If you leave it out in the first place, it won't hurt my feelings. That's not bastardizing a motion equation at all. Uh, equals one half of 9.8 times three seconds later, solving that. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next slide just to get the answer, 44. Okay, so that's 44 meters. So how could you find out how far away is that flower pot? If this is 44 meters, then I would probably go with finding the x direction distance, which is vx times t, which is three meters per second times three seconds, right? Whatever the ball's doing, three seconds unifies this entire problem, comes out to be nine meters. So that makes this distance nine meters and that distance 44 meters. You could pipe that goes two numbers to get that straight line distance. That would make a good question on the makeup test too. Yeah, this makeup test is really coming together. Uh, football kicked by a punter with initial speed of 20. I did a whole bunch of these already at the beginning of the period, so I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm going to give you a moment to pause, solve it. And I'm back with you again. I started by finding the X and Y components. There they are. I just wrote them right into this picture right here. I didn't actually show the VIX times VIX equals VI times cosine and VIY equals VI times sine and then get those components. Then I use the X component for finding the X direction. Ah, that's a crazy idea. I use the Y component for finding the time because in the Y direction, what goes up and comes back down takes exactly the same amount of time as something that does that, right? And so we ended up with 38.5. Man, would it be easy to make a test question where I could have, I mean, I ser seriously, I can make 42 of these, one for each of you. Just keep changing the numbers, just changing the numbers, changing the numbers, changing the numbers. Uh, it's not worth it. There's, there's no point. I don't believe you guys to be cheaters. So don't be that one person. Just do your own work. Graphing. Um, we have a bunch of different graphs for your test. So make sure you have two graphs on your test. It's just that we have a bunch of forms. So they all kind of follow the same rules, don't they? You know that in order to find the speed, the displacement, and the acceleration, before you even think about that, you're going to go take a step back and say, what kind of graph do I have? Okay, it's a velocity graph. Therefore, if they ask us what's the velocity, all I'm doing is reading it. So I'm just going to, I'm going to try to get rid of that. What I'm going to try to, what I'm going to do is just read it. So at two seconds, it's here. At 3.5 seconds, it's here. And at eight seconds, it's here. Why did I ask on your test for 3.5 seconds? Because I'm trying to, to lure you into a mistake and tell me that the velocity is zero because you see that it's a horizontal line. You're thinking, oh, the slope is zero there, right? So I'm trying to lure you into a trap. Don't fall for it. You're zen. You're going to go, okay, what does a velocity time graph do? It tells me the velocity. That's all it is. Then how do I find the displacement area under the curve? I'm not going to give you all the way out to the end on your test. I'll probably just ask you to go out to somewhere like this so you can show me that you can do both a triangle plus a rectangle. Some of you aren't even going to do that. You're just going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half boxes. Each box is not one. Each box is one by five. So that really means that each box has an area of five meters. Okay. So if I said seven and a half, yeah, I'm going to need a calculator. I hope you're going to use your calculator for your test. Um, to find out that area up to four, I've got it on the next slide. Uh, 
Then the last thing is, what is the instantaneous acceleration at these different times? Remember that instantaneous acceleration means that you're finding the slope of that particular line. You're not finding, like for example, at t equals eight, you're not going and finding the average acceleration by connecting these and finding that slope, right? Don't do that. This is not what we have. Sorry about the arrowheads on those. But I do have that on your test, that after you finish doing the instantaneous accelerations, I might ask you, what is the average acceleration at t equals 8? Then it would be the slope of that line, okay? Instantaneous, find the slope of the line at that point. Last problem, um, distance versus time graph. So before you start answering questions, you're going to stop by saying, okay, I'm zen. What does a distance time graph do? It only does two things. It tells us the distance and it tells us the speed. Now you might sit there going, I'm so disappointed. Well, how come I can't do acceleration? Truthfully, technically you can. If we could come up with an equation that matches this, we actually find out that in calculus, the second derivative will give us the acceleration on a distance time graph. But this isn't a calculus-based class, so therefore we don't do that. So what you would do for this one is only answer the questions, what's the displacement and what's the velocity? And then there is some concept question to this and there might still be on your test too. Where is the velocity zero? So don't just tell me that the velocity is zero right here, even though that is a correct answer. Okay? Remember that velocity is not where you read this graph. Velocity is where you take the slope on this graph. So if you think that the slope right here is a slope of zero, then you would say that the velocity is zero at t equals zero. If you think that the slope right here is zero, you're going to say that you think the velocity is, is zero at t equals 10. And I would accept both those answers if this is a test question, of course. Where is the velocity of, ma velocity of maximum? Look for the place, and I should be giving you time to, to work this yourself. Look for the place where the slope is steepest. To me, it looks like it's steepest right about there. So I'm going to say its velocity is a maximum, probably somewhere between like 5 and 7. Okay, Looks like it kind of goes kind of constant for a while there. So could we say during this time now, here's some acceleration questions, even though I don't ask you the value. Can you tell me a place where it's speeding up? You'd say, well, from t equals 0 to t equals 5, the slope is getting steeper and steeper. So the velocity is getting bigger and bigger. So that sounds like a place where it's accelerating. Is there a place where it's slowing down? From 7 to 10, the slope is getting less steep. Therefore, the velocity is becoming less. It's slowing down. Okay? Be careful because we can piggyback that set of questions that I just asked you. Next, oh, this would be great for the makeup test too with a velocity time graph that does the exact same thing. And I could ask you the same thing about where is it speeding up and where is it slowing down? And you would say, it's only speeding up. It's never slowing down. Have a good one. Wait, I gotta probably answer that. I know you wanna know an answer to that last one. Let me think about it.